Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose a, b, and n are positive integers. If a to the n is a divisor of b to the n, then a is a divisor of b. Now, in proving this theorem, we are going to use some facts regarding the greatest common divisors of integers. Here's the first fact. The greatest common divisor of a and b is the smallest positive integer of the form as plus bt, where s and t are integers. And here's a fact regarding greatest common divisors, which follows from this one. The greatest common divisor of a and b is equal 1, if and only if there exist integers s and t such that as plus bt is equal to 1. Now, here is a third fact that we're going to use in proving this theorem. Suppose a, b, and n are positive integers. If the greatest common divisor of a and b is equal to 1, then the greatest common divisor of a to the n and b to the n is equal to 1. Finally, here's the fourth fact that we're going to use in proving this theorem. Suppose a is a real number. If a is greater than 1, then, for all positive integers n, a to the n is greater than 1. Okay, so now, let's get into proving this theorem. To start out the proof, let's give ourselves three positive integers a, b, and n. From here, we want to prove if this is true, then this is true. So, let's suppose that this is true. From here, the whole goal is to prove that a is a divisor of b. Now, to start, let's denote the greatest common divisor of a and b by the letter d. Now, since d is the greatest common divisor of a and b, of course, d is a divisor of both a and b. So, since d is a divisor of a, this means there is some integer p such that a is equal to d times p. Similarly, since d is a divisor of b, this means that there is some integer q, such that b is equal to d times q. In fact, p and q must be positive, because a and d are positive, b and d are positive. In addition, since d is the greatest common divisor of a and b, we can apply our first fact. By our first fact, d is the smallest positive integer of the form as plus bt. And therefore, we know that there exist integers s and t such that d is equal to as plus bt. And then let's substitute a for pd, b for qd. And then we can take this equation and divide d on both sides. If we do that, we get ps plus qt equals 1. And since ps plus qt is equal to 1, by our second fact, the greatest common divisor of p and q is equal to 1. But then, by our third fact, the greatest common divisor of p to the n and q to the n is equal to 1. And now, let's go to the fact we haven't used yet. Since a to the n is a divisor of b to the n, this means there is some integer k such that b to the n is equal to a to the n times k. And then, if we substitute b for qd on the left side of this equation, well then the left hand side becomes q to the n d to the n. And if we substitute a for pd on the right hand side of this equation, the right hand side becomes k, p to the n, d to the n. Notice we can divide d to the n on both sides of this equation, so we're left with q to the n equals k, p to the n. So we see that q to the n is equal to an integer times p to the n, and therefore p to the n is a divisor of q to the n. Now at this point, Notice that p to the n is a divisor of itself, and p to the n is a divisor of q to the n. 
So P to the N is a common divisor of P to the N and Q to the N. But since one is the greatest common divisor of P to the N and Q to the N, one must be greater than or equal to P to the N. In fact, we know that P to the N is a positive integer, so P to the N must be greater than or equal to one. So, since P to the N is greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to one, that tells us P to the N must be equal to one. And now, turns out since P to the N is equal to one, it must follow that P is equal to one. And the reason why comes from fact number four. If we take capital A to be P, we have if P is greater than one, then for all positive integers n, p to the n is greater than 1. Well, we're going to use the contrapositive of this statement. That is, if there exists a positive integer n such that p to the n is less than or equal to 1, then p is less than or equal to 1. Well, in our proof, we already know that there exists a positive integer n such that p to the n is less than or equal to 1. All we got to do is take capital N to be n. Therefore, p is less than or equal to 1. So we know that p is less than or equal to 1, and since p is a positive integer, we also know that p is greater than or equal to 1. So because p is less than or equal to 1 and p is greater than or equal to 1, that tells us p is equal to 1. And then, going to the equation a equals pd, since p is equal to 1, we substitute p for 1, and we get that a is equal to d. But then, since a is equal to d, and d is a divisor of b, we can substitute d for a, and we get that a is a divisor of b. Which is exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's... Pretty much it for this video.